lathe related things. I have been practicing on some bits of wood. I believe this is oak. I'm no expert with regards to wood, but I bought some pen blanks from eBay, which if uh, memory serves, said they were oak. And I've been practicing doing some turning. I don't have a proper tool rest. So what I've been using at the moment is the um, the flat of the metal cutting tool that you can see in here. And I've been using that as a, as a sort of go-to tool rest for the moment to practice a bit of wood turning using the uh, the gouge which I believe this would be referred to as a sort of bowl gouge or something similar um, and the skew the skew is surprisingly difficult to control on this uh, obviously a proper tool rest would help immensely regarding that I'm sure first one I did with the tools was this one right here which I think I might try and drill through and make that into a, a cord pull for a light switch or something just just for the novelty um so yes unfortunately that's uh, that one is is ruined uh, sadly because i tried cleaning up the end without support and obviously that's quite thick there and uh, and it snapped so uh, so that's that but uh, in addition to that, I've done a little bit of metal turning, and this here that you can see, let me uh, bring this up here actually and focus on it for you, hopefully, there we go, um, this is just an, uh, an M10 bolt, um, Allen bolt, as you can see, and what I've done just for no particular reason other than to try it out, is I centred this in the four jaw chuck and have um, faced off the end and just turned down the threads um, some way and then added a chamfer on the end there. And although I think I, could have, I should have turned that a little bit faster, I was getting a little bit of chatter on some bits, so I was having to take smaller passes. Than, uh, than I thought were about right. Bear in mind I'm completely new to all this, but I, I think that looks quite um, acceptable. I'm, I'm reasonably pleased with that. And likewise with the wood turning, but onto the point of this video, and that is the pen kit. Now, fountain pens, I, I love fountain pens. I used to use a fountain pen years ago at school. I haven't used one properly for years. And I got this, as you can see, from Procraft, procraft.co.uk, and it's an all brass kit. And I got this because it's not like conventional ones that you turn on a spindle uh, with bushings. This one re re uh, requires you to drill out the end and it just, um, this portion of it fits into the end. I'll actually go ahead and take this out of the packet and show you what's included in all this. And they do do a rollerball version of this as well. And this one, thankfully, is not as critical measurement wise because the, the bit I'm going to have difficulty with is actually drilling the hole in the end of the blank. Solid brass kit from Procraft. Uh, really nicely made. Great value. Five pound plus postage, which for a fountain pen. I think is, is fantastic. The blanks were a set of blanks which worked out to about a pound each. So uh, I think that's quite reasonable. So for less than a tenner, you know, I've, I've got a really nice fountain pen. And where can you get a nice fountain pen for less than a tenner? You can get a fountain pen for less than a tenner, but a nice one, you know, undoubt uh, 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 I doubt it. Here is the package that the tank it comes in. I assume the rollerball version will be very similar. We'll so take that out and for some strange reason it's inside another plastic screen inside that one. And there's the components of the kit and then the wood portion glues onto this bit here. So we've got a um, plunger type uh, syringe filler um, cartridge. I'm not sure there's probably a proper name for these. And 
the idea with these obviously is you stick this in a bottle of ink and you wind it and it sucks up the ink into the cartridge and then you can you can have a bottle of ink and refill it and reuse it rather than using throwaway cartridges I guess and you've got a solid brass screw on cap which is very nicely made uh, relatively simple with regards to the decoration of it but you know nice and um, I suppose there's not actually any reason why I couldn't do a little bit of decorative turning on that. Maybe, maybe, maybe look at that later. And then the pen portion itself with a very nice nib. It is, I believe, iridium. This bit then unscrews and this is the bit that goes into your wooden blank. So you, um, you drill a nine millimeter hole which this then glues into at that depth and the hole has to continue down long enough that it allows for the full length of this. The cartridges I've got are slightly shorter so I could actually drill it just a little bit shorter. The tricky bit for me is going to be drilling it exactly the right kind of depth. Um, I'm not going to be able to use a drill of the full diameter on the lathe uh, because the Jacobs chuck, whoops, because the Jacobs chuck for the lathe, as you can see there, is quite tiny. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet. I will figure that out as I go. But essentially the hole has got to go down far enough to allow for that for a tight fit on that which I will glue in with epoxy and for this to go in and obviously the the tip and everything else can go in afterwards so it will fit right the way through as you can see there and this remains in the wooden bit and then this bit obviously unscrews from it so in pen making terms for anybody who makes pens I'm sure this is or this would be considered a very very simple pen kit but if I can make a usable pen kit out of this, I will be very pleased. And this is going to be my first proper, in inverted commas, project on the lathe. Just before getting on to that, I've just removed the remainder of this uh, this blank from the chuck jaws. Uh, just, to, oops, just to give you an idea of how that looked, is uh, I'll just put them together like so. And I've got to say, for a bit of freehand work with the gouge, I'm actually quite pleased with that you know it's that's my first proper proper attempt at turning something with a with a gouge with a wood turning chisel so you know I'm I'm not going to say it's the best thing ever or anything but I'm pretty pleased with that I think that looks quite nice quick clip here to show the uh, very Heath Robinson um, drill press setup that I set up to drill the blank with a practice on the end bit there and that's where we're at and it's it's not the most elegant but it should be okay and it's it's fairly straight so you know uh, being fairly straight is is as much as I can hope for uh, or ask for just at this moment because I don't have a proper drill press um, so it's certainly straighter than I would manage doing it by hand. And what I've ended up having to do is use a, uh, a drill in the four jaw chuck because uh, I used um, as many as I could in the Jacobs chuck, which was connected to this at first. And then uh, the largest nine millimeter in the four jaw chuck. So what I need to do now is actually get this epoxied in place and then I can, Reset. I'm just kind of mainly to show you the Unimat as uh, as a drill a drill press stroke milling machine setup. So here it is, the finished pen. There you go. What do you think? Of course, I'm not serious. Um, okay, so that's the all the bits sort of fitted into place, and of course, what I have to do now is turn this. So what I need to do is figure out some way of chucking this so that 
this portion I know is true and, uh, and level. So I need to, what I think I'm going to do is wrap these threads with a couple of layers of tape to protect them. Uh, chuck them in the four jaw chuck and, uh, and then use the dial gauge on this bit here to, uh, to make sure that it's true because I can't do it on the wood because the hole, as you can see, is very, is slightly off center. Although it's relatively straight, surprisingly, <laughs> given, uh, the, the method used to drill it, um, the, the hole is off center. So I can't, I can't actually true it on the wood because that would make the, the whole thing off center. I need to, I need to dial it in on this bit here so that I, when I turn it, it will turn true to this and not obviously to the uncentered wood. Um, uh, not uncentered as in, as in smell, as in not centered. And you know what I mean. Another brief update. Um, the idea about wrapping that, uh, chucking it and measuring is sound. However, I discovered it was a little bit more difficult than I thought because the square edges, obviously you've not got much material to get the probe of the um, dial gauge on. So I've shaved these down manually to, um, to get them closer to that shoulder to give me a little bit more room, a little bit more flexibility to position the dial gauge uh, so that I can, I can dial that in so that it's square. So, um, another update, um, as you can see, we're, uh, we're almost done with regards to the shaping and such. Um, there has been an almost disaster. You can see I've just pulled that off there and that's um, just about uh, parted off. Um, I've shaped the pen. I've basically gone for a, a kind of cigar type shape. I didn't want to make too much of a point at the end. I wanted to round it off nicely. And just to add a little bit of interest, I've, uh, using the gouge, I've just made a few little grooves and kind of uh, shaped them up at the start there. Uh, what I'm going to do now is part that off and then take some sandpaper and just kind of smooth the rest of this down a little bit more. Um, I took a little bit more meat off this. You'll note before it was sloping more front and back. And I left a bit on there thinking I'll, I'll leave it fairly thick. And I'm actually glad that I did because while I was messing around with the skew here, I, uh, I took a chunk out of this, which meant I had to do another couple of passes with the cutting tool to smooth it all down again. Um, so it's a good job that I did actually leave a bit of extra meat on there because I was umming and ahhing as to whether to do that. The almost disaster was down here. Now, if you remember, I'd said that I'd allowed enough room to before I started um, curving this, which I, I had. Uh, at some point, I wound up actually going further back on the curve than I planned. I should have kept the curve further down here. So as you can see, I've started thinning down further back than I originally planned, which was a bit daft of me. And I, I broke through just on one part of it, which is this dark bit right here. And that dark bit is, is because I've um, using a, a modeler's trick, which, uh, which is typically super glue and um, uh, bicarbonate soda. I basically use some little bits of the sawdust and super glue to kind of stuff that full, leave that, spin it to dry a little bit and then use the skew to sort of turn that back down. So hopefully that will hold together. Um, push comes to shove, I can always break this off because um, 
it's it is epoxied in but if if i have to i can always break this off and uh, and turn another one at some point but I'm, i was kind of hoping I'd, i didn't have to do that but you know for a first attempt it's not bad so that's where i'm at so i'm going to part this off give this a bit of a sand and then i'm going to make a wax now because i don't have any wood preservative that i'm aware of unless i've got a bottle of something hidden um under the uh, the side, but uh, I've, I've not got any varnish or anything of that nature. I don't really want a shiny finish. I want sort of the natural wood to come through. So I watched a tutorial, or rather I read a tutorial on making a beeswax and olive oil finish, which called for um, uh, an ounce of beeswax and a cup of olive oil. Now uh, I'm gonna make a smaller batch of that and you basically melt it, mix it all together, leave it to set, and you get yourself a natural wood finish. So I'm gonna, gonna give that a try. Last update for tonight. As you can see down there, that's the pen body finished, the turning finished. And that has had a couple of coats of this, which is a mixture of beeswax and olive oil. And it's quite gooey stuff. It's uh, it looks fairly solid, but it's uh, it's very soft. When uh, unlike beeswax, which is quite hard until it gets very warm, this only needs a little bit of warmth. And it's good because it soaks in, but also gives a really nice finish. Whereas olive oil on its own wouldn't dry, which is something because I was reading about the properties of olive oil. Olive oil on its own wouldn't actually dry. So it would leave a sticky finish overall. Uh, but combining the two, I'm really pleased with that. I mean, that, you know, that's, that's, that feels, doesn't feel greasy or anything. That's, uh, that's really nice. I think personally that that looks beautiful. Uh, that's the raw wood, as you can see there, uh, with the practice piece that I turned. And you can see the uh, distinct difference in that in it really really makes the grain jump out and if i just spin that around you can see also if i can find it um is that it there where is it no that's it there um this very dark bit there is my repair with the ca and sawdust so all things considered i don't think that looks too bad it, um, it could certainly look much worse. And uh, I, I should have made that, that little bit longer. Um, I lost the, uh, I lost sight of the mark that I'd made and made it a little bit shorter. I, I really could have done with uh, starting that curve about where that is rather than back here, which is what I ended up doing. And you can see there, I've got some little grooves in the body I just wanted to make that a little bit more interesting and just to add to that because when I carved off the corners so that I could get the dial gauge in to center this on the four jaw chuck I, I slipped a couple of times and I marked the little brass collar there now because it's solid brass the good thing about that it meant I could swap the tool out to a point tool down here and, um, and make a couple of very very light skim passes just to uh, to clean that up and then as I was doing that I thought just to add a little bit more interest make it that little bit different to a, uh, the what your standard pen kit would be uh, with the same point tool I just cut a couple of little grooves in that to kind of uh, mirror the the three grooves in the wooden body there and I might yet I'm actually really pleased with that so I might yet do something with the cap I don't know. I don't know for certain. But um, but I'm really, really pleased with that. That's had a couple of coats of the beeswax and olive oil. And they went on while it was warm and liquid. Uh, the idea being it's going to, well, in theory, uh, it will soak in a bit more easily, I guess. And then I will leave this overnight now and then tomorrow I will give it another coat of the beeswax and olive oil um, and see how that looks. Another couple if need be, but I think another coat might do it. You can see there where the, the gouges that unfortunately I wasn't able to turn the entire thing out as I thought I had. 
unfortunately but you know first project I'm, I'm still quite pleased with it all that said um so another at least one more coat and we'll see how that looks and then i can assemble the pen and give it a test i was actually trying to get that from the other side because the camera's in the way uh, as you can see however um as you also saw I'm not overly pleased with the fit of this particular cartridge, but I think that's more to, the, to do with the cartridge uh, because the proprietary one has a, a slightly shallower neck and this cartridge doesn't feel that secure. Last little update just before wrapping this up with regard to the ink. Um, I tried cutting a bit off the... Um, cartridge it didn't work i suspect this is the cartridge's fault uh, it's nothing wrong with the pen because the supplied adapter works well and i actually dug around and found another old fountain pen and this cartridge won't even fit into this it's slightly too wide at the body which is slightly wider than this because I, I put the adapter into this one which did fit so i suspect that's what happens when you buy uh cheap ink refills from Amazon as a tester. Um, essentially, I didn't want to spend silly money. I just wanted a nice red ink to, to sort of practice with. Uh, but yeah, unfortunately, that, that didn't work out quite as anticipated. But what I did instead is I took a an inkjet refill syringe and... Um, and essentially transferred the ink into the adapter as you can see there which worked quite nicely and that fits in good and firm the I'm not certainly won't be worried about that falling out as I would have been the uh, the ink refill um, cartridge so on that note I actually have some old but bottled and and good uh, inkjet printer ink. So if anybody out there knows, I shall try, once I've run out of this, I will actually try it, if not anyway, but if anybody out there knows, if you can successfully use inkjet printer ink, um, which I imagine is, must be a similar kind of formula because it's designed to go through very, very fine nozzles on your inkjet printer, uh, then um, give me a, a shout in the comments and uh, and let me know, let me know if you've tried it and if you've had success with it. So other than a little tiny bit of marring on the, um, oh, excuse my inked up fingers there, uh, other than a tiny bit of marring on the threads, um, I'm really pleased with how that's gone. And uh, I think I will actually do another one. I, I really, really enjoyed that. I'd like to do another one but with a, a longer body. And although that's nice, I would like to do one with a longer body and uh, possibly in a different wood, but I have got a few of these blanks to play with, so we'll see. And I can highly recommend this, a Procraft fountain pen kit. They also do a rollerball kit. And this, from the perspective of somebody who's never turned anything before, let alone 
um, a specific thing like a pen kit, it's it's quite easily manageable from a complete for a complete novice like me to get something nice and usable. And uh, I'm looking at that cap now, and you can see obviously there is a bit of a difference. I think I might just I might turn that down a little bit, make it look a bit shinier and prettier, and maybe put a little pattern on there. But we'll see. I'm not going to do that right this minute. Uh, apologies for the inky fingers. I have tried to clean that off. That is one aspect of fountain pen ownership and use that I had completely forgotten about. Uh, blissfully ignorant as they say but yes um, ink getting in places that uh, that obviously you don't get with rollerballs and, and ballpoints so yeah there we go so um, a quick I'm going to do a very quick sort of writing on a proper bit of paper test and we'll call that done